Welcome. It is a joy to be here worshiping with you today. During the season of Lent, we are discussing the I am statements from the Gospel of John, the statements Jesus uses to describe himself. This week, we are looking at Jesus' words saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And we're going to look and see what Jesus meant in his context and what it means to us as we apply it to our lives today. I'm excited to be worshiping with you. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to do so now. Please join me in the call to worship. We gather this day, O Lord, as people who seek your guiding love. Open our hearts and make us ready to stand firm in the faith that leads to loving service. Create a new people in this place so that your love may surround all who enter here. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let us pray. God of light and God of night, creator of seed and mountain, raindrop and fountain, we bring our offering of praise, God of right and God of might, lover of child and childless, rich and homeless. We bring our offering of praise as we pray the prayer your son taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 7. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to this place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My husband has what he dubs the Gillette Compass. He claims that his father had it before him and who knows, maybe our sons have it too. It's hard to tell because GPS has sort of made that skill obsolete. But by Gillette Compass, Trey means that wherever we are, wherever we are going, wherever our destination is, he can find the way without a map. Not only that, but the next time we go there, he can find the way using different roads. And I have to say, most of the time, the Gillette compass works. However, much to my husband's chagrin, his sense of direction sometimes fails. I'm certain that none of you, none of you have ever had an argument between passenger and driver about what road to take and what turn to make. Who does that? But I want you to consider this scenario. Imagine you are heading to somebody's home, but you don't have an address. You don't even know what part of town it is in. It would be a nearly impossible task to find that home. Today's scripture is, is about that home, that sort of place. You don't know how to get there. You see, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he begins by saying, My father's house is a huge place. It has many, many, many rooms, and I'm going to go there and prepare a room just for you. One might imagine that the disciples thought this was huge, a grand place, almost unimaginable. Places with more than one or two rooms were only reserved for Caesar, for kings, for important rulers, but not for everyday people. For us, a home in Jesus' time and place might seem to us like a hovel. There would be one, maybe two rooms. And if it was a sturdy home, there was the rooftop where someone could sleep. These were the homes that most likely the disciples had. The homes like the ones they grew up in. And so imagine a home with many, many rooms. That was something almost incomprehensible for Jesus' followers. 
And so the disciples get all worked up. They're excited to be invited to such a special place. They are raring up to go. But how do they get to God's home? Jesus told them, you know the way. Now they didn't have the Gillette compass. And in this case, the Gillette compass doesn't even work. It would not get us there. And so then Thomas spoke. He said aloud what no doubt many of the disciples were thinking. He said, Jesus, we do not know where this is. So how can we know the way? And Jesus' answer was important. He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. In other words, I'll show you how to get there. I'll be the compass. Notice that Jesus says, I am the way, not I have the way or I know the way. Jesus says he is the way. He is the way to the Heavenly Father. Think about this. He's not asking us to follow him to get to the Lord, to get to heaven. He is saying he is the path. He is the path. Nobody comes to the Father except through him. And so to be heading to the Lord's house, we must come to Jesus. We must come to him. Coming to Christ is so much more than following Christ. True faith encompasses all parts of our lives. Every part, it sinks in. And so, with that being said, how do we take our faith and come to Jesus? Let's start by realizing that the world is full of lies. Lies that have nothing to do with Christ as the way. The world says you need this, you should want this. Put yourself first, even the world says, because you're the most important. Sometimes the world says something that sounds good, help each other. But not because you're doing it for Christ or in Christ's name, but rather help someone because it will make you feel good. So how do we come to Jesus? How do we go to the way? We recognize that Jesus is the truth, the opposite of the world's lies. Jesus is the truth, and we know this when we hear his words, when we know his teachings, when we tune out the world and tune in to Jesus. Now, when my husband and I worked with the youth group for so many years, there was an exercise that we used to do with the kids. We would partner the kids up. And then when it was the partner's turns, we would have one partner on one side of the room and one on the other. The rest of the kids would line up along the periphery. Now there were obstacles between the two partners. And the way one got to the other partner was by listening to his voice. So, the partner would tell his friend, turn to the right, turn to left, step forward, step back. Sounds easy enough, but the rest of the kids are making a cacophony of sounds, of shrieks and noises and words so loud that it made it very hard to hear the voice of the one who will bring them home. Following that exercise, we would have a discussion with the kids. What is it in your life that is louder than Christ's voice, than the truth that Christ is telling us? Obviously, things like schoolwork or 
movies, TV, video games. Those are the answers the kids would give. But for us, what is louder? Is it work? Is it worry? Is it relationship trouble? Is it politics? Is it confrontation? What is it in our lives that are louder than Christ's voice, than the truth, which is Christ? So Jesus is the way, and we come to him because he is the truth. And then Jesus says that he is the life. This one's a little bit harder to comprehend because we are all living and breathing people, and so were those listening to him at the time. How is Jesus life? Well, we know this, that without Jesus, who is the light, there is no darkness. There is no forgiveness, no grace, no unconditional love. Without Jesus, his death and resurrection, there is no salvation, no eternal life in his father's home. Now, I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, and I will continue to say it until my dying day. The wages of sin is death, Paul says. Jesus paid that wage. Jesus took our punishment. Jesus died in our place. He didn't sin, but we did. And here's the kicker. Jesus conquered that death. He stomped it out like a cockroach crawling across the floor. He gained victory over death when he rose again, so that we may have life, which he is. We have that life and we can go be with his Father in heaven forever. Jesus is the truth. We must know that truth. Jesus is the life. We must have that life, which we get by knowing that he is the way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And so I say to my husband, sorry, Trey, I don't need the Gillette compass to find my way. I've got Jesus, the Jesus compass, and it never fails. And all of God's home-going children said, Amen. In the light of 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Praise be in the light of his glory.